Hi, I'm Lynn Padato with Adapt of Chicago Productions. Today we have with us Marco Bristow, the President and CEO of Access Living, who's here with us today to discuss the legacy of Dr. Henry Betts, the former chairman of the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago. Thank you for being with us, Marco. Hi, Lynn. Thank you for having me. So, uh, Dr. Betts passed away on January 4th, and I understand that you are really familiar with him. So, um, when did you first meet him, and what can you tell us about his legacy? <laughs> the story of how I met him tells a lot about him and his character. Um, I had been a patient at the Rehab Institute of Chicago when one uh, evening I broke my neck in a diving accident in Lake Michigan and I was at the Northwestern Memorial's spinal cord injury unit and about to be transferred to the Rehab Institute of Chicago. I had just learned that I was going to be in a four bed room with uh, three other senior citizens and I was 23 and that wasn't okay with me. Um, I had been working as a nurse at Prentice and Monica Betts just by coincidence went into labor and Henry was taking Monica into the labor and delivery suite when my nurse friends from labor and delivery where I had worked ganged up on him literally on the way into delivery and said our friend Marka needs a better room assignment will you help her and as the story is told by Henry he left Monica and went to the telephone and called over to RIC and said I don't know who this person is but help her out I need to get in with Monica so um, later I learned that story and later he figured out it it was me and it it was the kind of doctor that he was he took care with each and every person at the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago. Um, everybody there knew Henry. He walked the halls. He knew the first names and family stories of so many of the people who worked there, not just doctors and nurses, but the people who ran the elevators and the housekeeping staff. Um, there wasn't a person in that place that he didn't at some point touch. So he was really hands-on and just seems to have had such a presence within the institute itself and with well, the employees and the patients and everyone. He, he elevated the field of rehabilitation from sort of the bottom of the pecking order in medicine to a very important stature that it carries today. And of course, the Rehab Institute is still the number one rehab hospital. Um, I believe that Dr. Betts and the team there have trained more rehabilitation professionals than any anybody else in the world. Um, it, it certainly affected my life as a person with a disability and giving me the tools I needed uh, to be rehabilitated. But the thing about Henry is he understood more than any, anybody um, that rehab didn't end at the doors of the Rehab Institute. He understood that what happened out in the world was, was what was made the real difference for us. Before I was even disabled, Henry would um, go to uh, advocacy organizations that existed in the 60s and 70s to their Saturday meetings he didn't have to do that, but he'd show up at the meetings of the Congress of Organizations of the Physically Handicapped just to check in and see what was going on in our community. So it wasn't surprising that when um, the Rehab Institute was facing discharging so many young people into nursing homes that uh, he and they decided that there needed to be a better solution. And that resulted in the evolution of what became Access Living. Um, Henry understood that world-class rehabilitation um, means little if people can't get places, if they can't have accessible homes, if they can't work. And he would shout that from the rafters to whoever would listen. Uh, I'm here today carrying my personal library of letters and you know for the TV I don't know if you could see them but it's quite an assembly and I'm sure I have more that I haven't uncovered they go back to the 80s um, and it's correspondence between the two of us on issues that were important to him uh, because they were important to us and he listened to us and um, made a mark not only in the field of medicine but here in the Chicago community so what are some of the letters like what are the just randomly I'm looking at um, 
a letter that was sent to Senator Kennedy and Senator Durbin. I'll read the beginning of it because I think this is so important. When I was in medical school at the University of Virginia in Jefferson Shadow, you may remember, we sent all people with disabilities, quote unquote cripples, to a place in Richmond called the Home for the Incurables. It was like a life sentence with no trial. I am of the opinion that no minority group has had more disenfranchisement, more unfairness, or more torture than have the disabled. Correcting this is one of the reasons I went into the field of physical medicine and rehab. It appears to me now that it has gone full circle and we are essentially back in the same position. All too many people with disabilities are being forced into nursing homes and not enough attention is being paid to the possibility that with very little help, they can be at home and be self-sufficient, maybe even work and have a quality of life that suits them much better than any nursing home. Well, you know, the letters go on. I won't read any others, but I, I have some in here um, where he's uh, writing to President Clinton about um, his outrage that the commission establishing the FDR memorial did not include a FDR in a wheelchair initially. He worked with our community to make sure that that occurred. I see a letter in here to a religious leader who had made a, a speech on civil rights and uh, Dr. Betts used it as an opportunity to say you forgot about people with disabilities. They are a part of the civil rights community and it seems to me churches haven't done enough to break down barriers. Uh, the letters go on and on and on. Um, so he was such a strong advocate and in a time where people weren't that interested in they weren't interested at all in people with disabilities so that's right you know his his work i think went back to the days of the first uh, mayor daily um, he worked on getting the very first curb cuts downtown and um, henry and i used to joke about it because he he thought that that was that they solved the problem i said come on henry let's go for a walk they did about four blocks down around city hall and and so um, he of course was part of the uh, advocacy effort to lift these issues and supported us um, in so many ways. I will say on a personal level, um, Henry was my mentor. Um, my This organization, Access Living, was started through um, the investigation that RIC did into why so many young people were going into nursing homes. And when we decided to launch Access Living, they took a chance in me. You know, I'd never hired anybody, fired anybody, seen a budget, um, but they took a chance in me, and I'm ever appreciative of that chance. But it could have just ended there, and I think one of the reasons that Access Living has um, been such a strong organization is in those early years, I really had the mentoring not only of Henry, but of a lot of people at RIC that helped teach me a lot of the business side of things and also um, incubated us so that I could focus on the really important substance at the very beginning. Um, and then, you know, um, a lot of people don't realize how much time he put into these kind of things. Uh, we would meet for lunch probably three or four times a year, not for my benefit, but for him to learn what are the core issues in the community. And the letters here reflect those whether it was physician-assisted suicide or the need for accessible, affordable housing or the ethical issues of um, uh, a family who chose to give their child hormone treatments and r remove their sexual organs in order to make it easier for them to care for that child. Um, it really ran the gamut of issues well beyond the basics of accessibility. And I understand that he was also uh, part of the American Disabilities with Americans with Disabilities Act, as you were. Did you guys work on that um, well, centerpiece uh, the, the, together? The disability community led the charge on this. Um, but when we asked for letters of endorsement, um, the institute was always ready to assist. Um, so the partnership that that Henry helped establish was pivotal in our ability to do this. However, for example, um, I met many of the elected officials by Henry opening a door for me. I have a, uh, we, not I, the disability community has a long standing 
uh, relationship that continues to this day with Senator Bob Dole. And I met Senator Dole in 1981 at a lunch that Henry invited me to. Uh, it, it was interesting because Senator Dole said, so what is peer counseling? And I said, well, it's when one person with a disability shares what they've, the tricks that they've learned to, to be more independent. And he said, well, could somebody help me uh, figure out how to button my shirt? <laughs> and I turned to Henry and I said, I bet that could be arranged, Henry. Don't you have some gizmo here? So we walked down to RIC's OT department and they made him a buttonholer on the oh. spot. And you know, I was back to see Senator Dole just a few weeks ago uh, following our efforts to get the disability treaty ratified. And um, in one of my meetings, we were talking about this and he opened his desk drawer and he pulled out the buttonholer. <laughs> and I thought, wow, you know, talk about a practical input impact that RIC had, you know, that little incident, I think, cemented my relationship with Senator Dole. And Senator Dole became one of the strongest advocates for the ADA. And Henry did that not only in opening doors for disabled people in the political sphere, um, he also helped introduce us to many people who became supporters of Access Living. Um, I could not have been successful in raising the funds to build this building without the many friends that we met through our partnership with RIC. And he also had the vision to understand that it's, you gotta walk the walk and talk the talk. That it's one thing to pontificate it outside in the world, but you have to do it in your home as well. So Henry, somewhere in the middle years, I said, Henry, how come there aren't any board members on RIC's board with disabilities? He said, that's a big problem. Thank you. And so before you know it, there were four of us appointed to the board. Um, and we continued to serve there for a, the entire time he was in leadership. So, uh, he, you know, we love him. And although I've been speaking about this in the first person, um, because it is personal, I wish I had thought to bring in all the Facebook posts and all the emails that I got from disabled people all around the country who knew that he was close to Access Living and who were sending us their condolences and their respects for what an important person he was. Um, one thing I, I should mention and want to mention is for many years, the Rehabilitation Institute, um, in honor of Henry's 25 years of service, so when he hit his 25th anniversary, they decided to create the Henry B. Betts Award. And there was great debate within the board, I was on the board, about who should be receiving that award. And we made the case that people with disabilities uh, really needed to be included. Um, we Initially, they were thinking about it going to medical practitioners, but with their guidance, that award was open to all. But I have to say nearly all of the people who received it, not all, were people with disabilities. And that award became the Nobel Prize to uh, people with disabilities. It was coveted. Um, and it helped really elevate people's careers. You know, these were people already in very strong leader positions, leadership positions, but once they received that award, it positioned them to move forward even more so. And is that an annual award um, that's The, the award still was, given out? was retired a oh. few years ago, um, but the, it's, it's um, you know, legacy lives on amongst those people who were um, uh, honored enough to receive it. Well, speaking of legacy, so Dr. Betts sounds like a credible person throughout Chicago and nationally, too, in disability rights. Um, what do you think 50 or even 100 years from now, how, how, how will he be remembered, if you can sum it up? For putting the field of rehabilitation on the map and for his belief in people with disabilities using our own voice and helping us to open the doors to do so. Well, what an honor it was, I'm sure, for you to have known him for so many yeah. years, and, and he'll be missed. One final thing. You know, I run Access Living, so I, I um, you know, am a somewhat public figure, but these little niceties didn't just go to people in leadership roles. 
um, since he passed away. My, I have various staff who maybe only met him once or twice who've come and shared with me the notes that he sent to them, encouraging them uh, in their growth and development. So he took the time to really reach out to people in a very personal way. Well, thank you, Marcus, so much for sharing your memories of him and discussing his legacy and the great things he did for Chicago and nationally, too, for people with disabilities. We really appreciate it. Well, we miss him, and I know I uh, share this from many Chicagoans that we're not going to forget him, and we're going to continue to work all that much harder. Thanks. Thank you. It's been more than 40 years since Dr. Henry Betts created a revolutionary program at Northwestern University's medical school, a new medical specialty called rehabilitation medicine. The idea was not merely to treat the disability, but also to help the patient discover a new way of living. By creating a partnership between doctors and patients, Henry Betts redefined the treatment of people with disabilities. He established an academic program for medical students that has become one of the largest residency programs in the country. It trains more physicians in rehab medicine than any place in the world. Under his leadership, the Rehabilitation Institute outgrew the small, outdated warehouse where it began to become the modern 18-story, 165-bed facility we see today. It has a comprehensive system of care that has earned an international reputation for innovation, patient care, research, and education. It has been named the best rehabilitation hospital in America for 17 years in a row. In 1980, Henry Betts helped found Access Living. He understood that once they left the hospital, disabled people needed help to make the transition to full participation in the world. It's the idea that still guides Access Living today. Henry Betts is more than a doctor. He is an advocate for disability rights. He championed the passage of the Americans with Disabilities Act and continues to speak out on critical issues. His work and his strong vision are at the heart of disability culture. After all, he helped to invent it by putting a human face on the whole idea of rehabilitation. Access Living salutes Dr. Henry B. Betts.